once you have the crowd cheering you or booing you or, or whatever it is, you know, all that energy in the room, you just you just can't go back. You just want it again and again. For whenever you're listening to the Joshi Pod, your weekly podcast about the world of Japanese women's wrestling, Joshi Wrestling. I'm your host, Eric Howard, not coming to you from beautiful San Diego, California, but this time coming to you from a hotel room in Ellington, Cal- uh, sorry, Ellington California, Ellington, Florida. Uh, real life has me on the road this week with my uh, teammates, Dave, Dan, Jeff, Jay, Derek, and Steve. They're all downstairs enjoying some chicken wings and watching some football. I'm up in my hotel room doing a podcast, and I wouldn't have it any other way. Thank you so much for listening to last week's episode with Zoe Sky. If you haven't had a chance to listen to it yet, go back and download it and give it a listen. Uh, while you're at it, go ahead and rate, review, and subscribe to the Joshi Pod. You won't be disappointed. We have some uh, pretty fun previous guests on the show, like Josh Barnett, Priscilla Kelly, and the Wrestling Observer's Jim Valley. And uh, yeah, go ahead and download that and uh, give us a follow and give us a follow on Twitter at the Joshi Pod as well. Uh, on the show this week, we have a three count headlines of the week. We take a look back at the two stardom shows, uh, actually the two matches this past weekend at the Car Expo in Anaheim that I attended. Uh, we'll also take a look ahead at the Joshi shows uh, this week in Japan, and we'll also take a quick look to see where Joshi performers are performing outside of Japan. And in the main event, we're joined on the show uh, by the toxic spider Tikla. I'm sure I'm pronouncing that wrong. She tried to teach me for like five minutes how to pronounce her name, but I'm sure I'm butchering it. This is the exact type of interview I, I want to do on the Joshi Pod. Uh, the goal of this podcast was to share stories, not always the most well-known and established performers, but also the up-and-comers with a unique story, and that's exactly what te- te- Tikla is. And what makes her unique? Uh, first off, she's from Austria. I didn't know the whole lot of wrestlers from Austria and didn't know there was much of a wrestling scene in Austria. And second, who knew somebody from Austria would be selected to go to a, on a tour to Japan? Uh, she had, um, toured with Ice Ribbon. Uh, she's probably going to go back again. Um, the chat with Tikla is a whole lot of fun. Uh, please stick around and listen to it. You won't be disappointed. She's uh, a great guest and uh, hopefully we'll be, hear, be, we'll be hearing a whole lot more from her going forward. First, the three count headlines of the week are brought to you by Quiet White Designs. The team at Quiet White Designs, you know, Nolan and the rest of the team do a great job designing uh, logos and t-shirts and hats and patches and whatever else you need. Uh, please reach out to them at, uh, go to the Facebook page at Q-U-I-E-T-W-Y-A-T-T, one word, designs on Facebook. You can also find them on Redbubble. Uh, you won't be disappointed. You'll, you'll get great uh, quality and you, you get great service from Nolan and the team at Quiet White Designs. They just had my new logo come out. Uh, you can see it on uh, Twitter and Instagram and my Facebook page as well. But uh, they've designed that and they're going to help me design a t-shirt coming in early 2020. Headline number one, MVP, MVP, MVP. Mayu Iwatani won the uh, Tokyo Sports Women's Wrestling Grand Prix 2019, the, the MVP award. Awards like this are pretty subjective, so people will agree and disagree with the pick. I don't think there was a clear MVP this year. I think arguments can be made for Chihiro Hashimoto, Sari, Takumi Roha. Uh, Risa Nakajima, and probably a, a few others. Um, Mayu's a great ambassador for the sport. She's obviously one of the faces of stardom uh, in 2019 going into 2020. Uh, it's a bit of a popularity contest, and she, she's a wonderful wrestler as well, so I'm, I can't really say uh, it was a bad selection. But uh, have you heard people on Twitter can be negative sometimes? I'm sure you're shocked to hear that. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, Mayu Mayu's a, as deserving as anybody, so I congratulate her on Winning the award for 2019. Headline number two. You're out of here. Stardom has banned a fan going to future shows. And the reason why the fan was banned was because he was allegedly sexually harassing women on social media. Um, One of the victims that I happened to have met back in September in Tokyo not knowing, you know, what, what was going to happen or anything like that. We just, I just hit it off with her at one of the shows and she was super nice to me. Uh, she said she's never met the person before. Uh, she's never seen him uh, or never met him at a show. She said she only knew him from Twitter and the messages they were sending on Twitter. And she was very thankful that stardom banned the fan from future shows. So kind of, I mean, very lousy story. And, uh, I'm glad stardom stepped forward and, um, made sure they took care of this the right way. Uh, they're trying to attract women fans and 
they need to protect women fans. And Atsuko Tora uh, was awesome on uh, social media as well, saying she'd protect any woman that comes to the show. So uh, well done, Stardom. Well done, Atsuko Tora. And well done to the young ladies that stepped forward and uh, brought this to everybody's attention. Headline number three. The cutest wrestle queendom in the world. <laughs> you knew Pro Wrestling E would bring in some Joshi talent for their big wrestle, uh, wrestle Queendom 3 show on January 11th in, uh, in London. Uh, this past weekend, it was announced that Maki Ito would be making a UK debut. Uh, who's her opponent? Who else could her opponent be? Session Moth Martina. What a match. Uh, I'm sure Wrestle Queendom 3 will be reviewed on this podcast. Uh, FYI, guys, Brooklyn in the hole. Our Brooklyn The Hole, I'm sorry, is available on iTunes in the U.S. And uh, Ito just t- had her third anniversary uh, wrestling on this past Tuesday. I can't wait to see this sh- match. Uh, it's a Tokyo Joshi Pro young lady versus a uh, stardom young lady in the U.K. Pro Wrestling League, well done. I uh, can't wait to see the rest of the card for that uh, Wrestle Queen League 3. <laughs> The shows of the week this week were the two stardom matches at the Kara Expo in Anaheim last weekend. Uh, the first day I walked in a little early and saw Mayu and Tam warming up in the ring. And uh, they saw me taking pictures from afar. And of course, uh, Tom, or Tam and Mayu both posed for me. Uh, it's a real cute picture. You can see it on my uh, Twitter account at the Joshi Pod. Uh, the first, uh, the first day, uh, they sold t-shirts. If you bought a t-shirt, you got a meet and greet with Tam and, and Mayu. I got there about an hour before or after, actually an hour after it opened and they'd already sold out. So a uh, great, uh, great thing for Tam and Mayu. People bought up those uh, meet and greets real quickly. Uh, later that day, they uh, came out and did a little interview segment with Riske Taguchi and uh, Rocky Romero, who had a little talk show to, to hype up the shows. They had a, uh, the Stardom match, and they also had some New Japan matches at the uh, the event. And, and the Car Expo is an event put on by Bushi Road, which owns both New Japan Pro Wrestling and now Stardom as well. I actually saw Mr. Kidani walking around uh, the, the uh, Car Expo and took a picture with him. A uh, nice guy. Uh, I didn't slap him like Hannah did. Uh, people asked me that or told me that I should have, but I, <laughs> I didn't. Uh, anyway, uh, Tam and, and Mayu uh, did a little interview, greeted uh, greeted the fans for, for coming out and uh, uh, welcomed everybody to come back later in the day to watch them uh, wrestle. And that day they did wrestle. They wrestled a tag team match with... Uh, Sumi Sakai and Nicole Savoy taking on Mayu and Tam. And, of course, Mayu and Tam got the big win. They got uh, greeted by streamers from fans. Uh, a fan came out and handed out streamers to a, a bunch of the people in the crowd, which was pretty cool to see. Uh, I'm sure a lot of the people there hadn't seen uh, uh, Tam or Mayu in person before. I luckily have. Uh, but uh, Tam doesn't make a whole lot of appearances in, in the U.S., and especially California. I can't remember a time that she's came out here. Um, I've seen... The people in the U.S. have seen Mayu at uh, uh, AWS shows. Not AWS. Uh, they did the um, Stardom USA shows here uh, a little while back. and uh, But it was nice to see people throw streamers and see uh, uh, Mayu spin around and do her whole thing. Uh, they did pick up the win. Um, and then the uh, meet and greet was after, after the matches, after the New Japan matches around 4 o'clock in the afternoon. And like I said, those sold out pretty quickly. Uh, the second day was much of the same. Uh, I was actually lucky enough to get a uh, T-shirt the next day to do the meet and greet with Tam and Mayu. Uh, I'm a fanboy. I'll always be a fanboy. Uh, that's why I do this podcast is because I, I, I love Joshi Wrestling. I love I love wrestling in general. And uh, I met Tam. But actually, I've met Mayu before, not Tam. I've met Mayu at a uh, Ring of Honor show in Las Vegas and got an autograph there. But I'd never met or got an autograph from Tam. So I was lucky enough to get another, uh, I guess you get an autograph from Tam this time. Uh, they did it again uh, the, before uh, the show started on uh, Sunday. Uh, they had the uh, talk show again with uh, Ryusuke Taguchi and Rocky. And this time uh, Tam invited uh, Ryusuke to dance with her and they all did the uh, Taguchi dance together. Uh, that's on the internet. It was a whole lot of fun to see live. Uh, they were having such a good time. And uh, newsflash, Rocky Romero cannot dance. Uh, he was the guy standing in the corner watching pretty much and just kind of wiggling a little bit. Kind of, I, I relate, Rocky. Um, but again, they, again, later in the day, they wrestled uh, 
Nicole Savoy and Sumi Sakai. And again, they picked up the win. The Mayu and Tam picked up the win. Uh, real fun matches. Uh, Sumi is working great as a heel. Uh, Nicole Savoy is amazing as well. And uh, hopefully those two will get another uh, look by stardom. Nicole Savoy is great. I think she's... Uh, She's due for another uh, tour of Japan really soon, uh, either with Stardom or somebody else. Uh, no reason she is not signed by somebody. Uh, I did have a conversation with her after the match is on Saturday, so uh, she'll be on a future episode of the Joshi Pod. Uh, you'll want to hear what Nicole has to say. So, uh, again, subscribe. Don't miss any of these interviews. I'm trying to bring you the most fun interviews I can and go into events and uh reaching out to the, the wrestlers at the events and a lot of them have been very kind enough to take the time to talk to me uh, as a fun weekend again uh, don't see a whole lot of stardom in the usa right now so it was real great to see tam and mayu uh in my neck of the woods and uh, looking forward to to more bushy road uh stardom um combined events and uh keep an eye out i will announce more uh collaboration shows hopefully in the future just stay tuned to the joshi pod Oh, hey guys, what's going on? My name is Steve. I'm the host of the last podcast you'd want. Do you like movies? Well, that's what we talk about. I bring a guest on, maybe more than one, and we talk about movies they like, movies they don't like, movies from their childhood, movies they give them nightmares. Just some of the few topics that we talk about on the last podcast you'd want. So if you like movies, you could find us on Apple Podcasts, you could find us on Google Podcasts, you could find us on most major podcast outlets. Tip the veal, try the staff, check out the show. All right, let's take a look at the shows this week in Japan. On Friday the 13th today, we have the to- uh, Pure J uh, at the Tokyo Art Center Studio. Uh, Manami Katu and Mari Manji take on Chihiro Hashimoto and you. Those two are awesome together. On Saturday the 14th, Stardom's in Kanagawa. Uh, Gato Moves in Ichigaya. Sendai Girls are also uh, going to have a show at their dojo and the Ice Ribbon Dojo as well. Uh, hopefully Yappy will wrestle. I'm trying to get Yappy on the show pretty soon. Uh, she's got a pretty amazing story, so working on uh, Yappy. Uh, hopefully we get her on here real soon. And again, on the 15th, Oz Academy has a big show at Kirk and Hall. Looks like it's almost sold out. Uh, Stardom has a show in Shinkiba, uh, Shinkiba first ring in the morning. Uh, Hazuki faces the entire Stardom roster in one-minute matches. Uh, the Stars face Tokyo Cyber Squad in an elimination match, and Julia continues her rampage across stardom when she faces Andres Miyagi. I'm afraid my, my Andres is about to get uh, destroyed by, by Julia. Uh, Diana is at the Kanagawa, in Kanagawa at the Diana Dojo. Uh, Ice Ribbons in Hokkaido. Uh, Sumeri Natsu's forever uh, self-promoted show uh, is that evening as well on the 15th at Shinkiba First Ring. It's completely sold out. Good job, Natsu. Uh, very excited for that. I'm going to try to see that somehow this past, this next week, and uh, hopefully have a review of the show. Uh, it's got some pretty. Uh, it's got some of the stardom young women on the show, and uh, the women from other promotions as well. So it's kind of an all star show, which, as you heard from last week's episode, I love, love, love. And finally, on the 18th, Sendai Girls are in Osaka, and Ice Ribbon is at the Ice Ribbon Dojo, also on the 18th. Let's take a quick look to see where Joshi performers will be performing outside of Japan coming up here. On the 15th, Miko Satamura will be in progress wrestling in Sheffield, England. Uh, she'll be defending her women's championship there. I'll put a link to where you can buy tickets. And then also, as I spoke before, Maki Ito will be at Wrestle Queendom 3 on January 11th for uh, EVE Wrestling. Uh, those tickets look like they're going really fast as well. I'll put a link on for the, that show as well. And if you guys have any other, um, pr- the promoters, uh, listeners, whoever you are, if you have a, a listing of uh, Joshi performers wrestling abroad, please go ahead and shoot me over an email at the joshipod at gmail.com. I'd like to uh, let the people know about those as well. I want to thank you guys one last time for downloading uh, to this episode of the Joshi Pod. Uh, thanks for listening. Uh, you can follow the Joshi Pod on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram at the Joshi Pod. 
Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at Eric San Diego. Again, uh, please rate, review, subscribe on anywhere you get your uh, podcast from, like Apple Podcasts, Spotify, uh, pretty much all the platforms uh, it has it, it's available. Uh, again, uh, reviewing and subscribing is real important and uh, working real hard for you guys to get you guys some really fun interviews and like the one we have with Tikla today. Uh, so further ado, uh, let's take you to the main event interview brought to you by the Level Up Pro Wrestling School in San Diego, uh, B-Boy has over 20 years of wrestling uh, experience uh, with companies like Ring of Honor, CCW, Pro Wrestling Gorilla, and, and many, many more. Uh, if you're looking to get started, he'll teach you the fundamentals. If you're from another school looking to get polished up, uh, he can do that for you as well. He'll get you ready for a, a tryout with WWE and whoever else. Uh, he's always been a super innovative wrestler. Uh, he's a, a super talented guy, hardworking, loves the business. Uh, that's the kind of people you want to learn from, uh, people who love the business and want the best for you, which absolutely B-Boy wants from his guys and his girls. Uh, again, contact the Level Up Pro Wrestling School at levelupschool.sd at gmail.com or give them a call at 619-825-7668. B-Boy's the man. Go learn from this guy. Ladies and gentlemen, you're listening to the Joshi Pod. Yeah, you heard that right. Japanese women's wrestling and I am Brian Pillman Jr. and I'm here to say that Joshi Wrestling is one of the most exciting wrestling you can watch and you can listen and hear all about it right here on the Joshi Podcast. I want to thank Brian for doing that. Uh, it's time for the main interview with Tikla. Uh, she goes into the uh, wrestling scene in Austria uh, and surrounding countries, how she got over to Japan. I really think you're going to enjoy this interview. Uh, without further ado, let's talk to Tikla and uh, we'll talk to you guys next week. Arigatou gozaimasu. Welcome, welcome to the show, Tekla. Tekla, Te- oh, I'm going to mispronounce it 8,000 times, I'm sure, on <laughs> this interview. Fine. Tell the audience how to pronounce your name, please. Yeah. So, hi, my name is Tekla, a.k.a. the Toxic Spider. Um, yeah, I guess Tekla is the right way to pronounce it. Tekla is also fine. Tekla is also fine. In Japan, they say Tekura. <laughs> uh, yeah. Thanks for having me. Well, welcome to the show. I, I appreciate you, you coming on. So when did you become a fan of wrestling in general? Gee, I think I was about 18. I got into wrestling rather late, actually. Um, I used to go to a lot of concerts uh, here in Vienna, in Austria. And at some point I saw a poster, which was for an event that was called the Rock and Roll Wrestling Bash. And it looked pretty cool. So I went there with my with a couple of my friends. And it was the first time I ever got in contact with wrestling in general. And that was like, it was one of the sickest things that I had ever seen at that point. And I, I pretty much got into wrestling right after that. So I started, um, I mean, that was, I think, in 2011 or 12. And so you never watched it on TV before that or anything? Not no, I, no, I, or anything? no, we didn't have that back here in Austria. I mean, or at least I didn't know about it. And I, I didn't have any friends who were into it either. So once once we went to that show, we actually got together with other people, you know, like new friends. And then those were like massive WWE fans. And then we started to, you know, hang out together and go to go to each other's houses, order pizza and then watch the main events. So, yeah. And then I slowly got into wrestling and then I figured out that there were a lot more shows in Vienna and um I started going to the shows that my current promotions, uh, my current promotion are putting up. And then after two years of watching those shows and being a fan of that promotion, I was like, hey, why, why don't I try this? This looks cool. I'm, I'm you know, I'm um, a sporty person. And um, with my musical background, I'm used to being on stage. So that's how I got into it. So what was it about the, the live shows that interested you what what made you want to stick around and come back gee um, it was the first with the first show I mean it was for me it was a pretty cool mix because I loved going to like music concerts like punk shows and uh, metal shows so and they had a punk band playing in the back and then you had the wrestling shows and I loved what I think the, the thing that caught me instantly was the like the flamboyant characters and it was like you know the 
the rock and roll wrestling bash they had they had you know characters that were also creepy in a certain way and i liked that a lot like you know a guy called boris the butcher and he was carrying like a dead chicken around with him it was super obscure and grotesque and i i, I don't know it was crazy the people went absolutely wild and i thought obviously the the stunts were pretty cool so i know I, I think that i think i think it's the whole thing it's just a spectacle you can't compare it to anything else in my opinion so yeah. you're, you're watching it for a couple of years and you decide to to start training who do you who do you contact to, to train um i don't know i just went on the internet and and i found a website and i found the number of my trainer humongous probably don't know him i mean he's a bit more uh known in japan and um, southeast asia and obviously in austria so i contacted him and he was like yeah come around sure and I went to training and that's where I started off um you know you've probably heard it before it's a it's a, the first time is pure torture um you know just starting out with the training is very hard but I don't know it was it was for me I, I stuck around and I'm very glad I did did you play other sports when you were a kid uh, I was a dancer I started out with ballet actually um I mean some people would say that does that you know that doesn't have anything with, to do with wrestling but you know it's it's about you know I got very flexible which is very helpful right now it's about discipline and yeah it got me uh, that was a long time ago but it got me in the right direction I feel and I did uh, how do you say gymnastics but mm -hmm. that was just for a short time when I was living in the states actually I did that for three months or four months and I did a bit of kung fu uh, it's like a Bing Chung, don't know if you know that, but that also is, it's a bit helpful when you start out with wrestling. It has a little bit of similarities, I guess. So you're the metal, punk rock, ballerina, gymnast, kung fu. <laughs> yeah, I guess. I'm wrestler. all over the place. <laughs> all over the place. You have gimmicks for days. I mean, you can do whatever you want for how many years? I know. Now? I know. I, it's very hard for me to decide on one life. So I just, I just decided to do it all. I don't know. Why not, right? exactly <laughs> so how did your early matches go once you once you finished training um I, I had my debut a half a year after I started and that was pretty cool I mean I trained a lot for that I went to the gym a lot so you know I like my body exploded I was like double the size I was before and I was like super um focused and well prepared I'd say and that was cool and you know once you're on stage once you're 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 doing, you, you know, you have your first show, you're just, uh, it just kicks off from there. Like once you have the crowd cheering you or booing you or whatever it is, you know, all that energy in the room, you just, you just can't go back. You just want it again and again. So it, it went pretty well. And yeah. So it, yeah, it just got more and more. You're in a band called, you're in a band called the Death Row Groupies, correct? That's right. So your first show playing music versus your first show wrestling, how would you compare the two? Ooh, that's a good question. It's not that different in a way, you know. I mean, being in front of a crowd is always the same thing. I think I think I ha I'm I'm a bit more easy when it comes to wrestling in a weird way. Like I'm not that nervous. Uh, it's like it's more intuitive. With the music, it's like you know you have to rem I'm, you have to remember the songs and you know it's 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 a, a longer show also like you're on stage for 20 to 30 minutes so you have to have more stamina. I I mean for wrestling I guess you have to have that too but I haven't had any 30 minute matches yet so I can't really compare that. But I don't know wrestling as I said is more intuitive for me. I feel um I feel a bit easier and like I can do whatever I want. Well, with music, I have this, you know, the set list is set and I have to be prepared in a different way. But it's very, it's very similar, actually. What are your bandmates? Do, are, do any of them, like, are they into wrestling at all? Yeah, yeah, sure. Like, um, our bassist, she's my best friend. And she also, she was also my manager for a while. Um, had to fire her. She didn't do a very good job. But yeah, we got into wrestling together. So she's, she's, she loves it. And and then some of my other friends, they are they are all they all like it, but most of them don't really know what it is. Like they they first heard of it once I started doing it. What do they think when they come to shows and watch you wrestle? Um, I think they all think it's extremely cool. To be honest, like there there are some of them who 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 I think they feel the same way that I felt when I first saw it. 
And there's some of them who, who are a bit scared to go there. Like they, they have no idea what, the, what they are going to see, what they can expect. And they're a bit like um, shocked first. But then those are usually the ones that I hear the loudest scream, like, you know, obscenities, like, kick her in the face, you know? <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> and, and then, they, you know, they, they're like, they cover their mouths. They're like, oh, my God, did I just say that? But then, you know, <laughs> you know, you can see how their heads explode. That's it. And they all think it's great. What do you think your ballerina instructors would say if they saw you wrestle now? Jesus, I'm, I'm sometimes I wonder, like, I mean, I'm, I did this interview thing for TV as well, and it's going to come out in a couple of months. And I'm always like concerned with that. If, if my teachers, you know, or, or my ballerina teacher, if she sees it, what she's going to think, I don't know. I think they would all say I'm crazy or I don't know. I don't uh, think they would be very proud, but yeah, I, I don't know. I think they'd be proud. I'm sure they'd yeah, appreciate they it. Yeah, better be. They better be. You're living your you're living your dream, right? Exactly. I'm um, having I'm I'm having the best time of my life. Good. Okay. So you continue wrestling in in Austria. Are you mainly staying in Austria? Are you heading over to Germany or any other places in Europe at all? I mean, I'm I'm I would say I'm at the beginning of my career right now. So mm-hmm. um, I've been to Germany once. That was last year. And then I've been I went to Japan last year as well. But except for that, I was only wrestling in Austria. Mainly, the scene isn't very big here in Vienna or in Austria in general, and there is there's not much females wrestling or I don't know except for my own promotion, and we have we have a show every two months, so it's not much actually. Like when I first started out, I would have about five or six matches a year, and that's really not much. So, but I'm I'm like also coming back from Japan and everything, and you know I've been getting into it a lot more the last couple of months. Now I think it's gonna start off like me going to Germany, and I've had uh, people asking me to go to Croatia for shows, and I think Hungary is is a big possibility as well. And I've also met some people in the UK and Spain. So I think next year, like 2020, is gonna be really good. Gonna mm-hmm. probably mm-hmm. travel more. Seems like you're made for Pro Wrestling Eve, though. The one in yeah, the UK. You're I made know, for that. that. Yeah, I know. That I really want to go there. Like, I if I if I put a little bit more time into it, I could see myself going there next year, maybe. Like, with the punk and the feminist and the wrestling background, all that together. Uh, Eve would be really great. We have to put it out there, then. I'll, I'll, we'll have to tag them on a post and get it, get it in the works for you. That would be sweet. <laughs> All right, so you, you're you're training, you're working in in Austria, and then how did how did the opportunity arise for you to go to Japan? Right, so Japan, I went there for the first time in 2017, at the end of 2017, and I had my debut match for WUW, that's an underground league in Tokyo, um, on the first of January 2018. So that was my first introduction to Japanese wrestling. I only had one show because I actually went there, you know, as a um, uh, for a holiday. Mm-hmm. But also my my trainer hooked me up with that for that one match, which was pr- pretty cool. I I went to see the New Japan um, Wrestle Kingdom show. So yeah, basically I was just on holiday there because I'm not gonna lie, I'm a bit of a weeb myself, and I just love the Japanese culture. And I had the opportunity to wrestle there. And then this year... Um, so look, hold on. Yeah. Um, before we get to that, let's talk Let's talk about what you like so much. Because I, I love Japan as well. I've been there four yeah, times. I'm, go, I'm going back t- two more times next year. Nice. So, <laughs> so, so tell me what, what you love about the Japanese culture. Gee, there's a lot I like. I mean, I love watching Japanese movies. That's where it starts off, I think. I, I love the Japanese culture in general. I, I love going to the Kabuki theaters, you know, and Rakugo theater and also a bit of J pop. I like that too. The food is amazing. It's uncomparable with anything else I've ever had. The sweets are cool. I you know this also this rare, weird culture they have, like the way they, they interact with each other, I find that extremely interesting. And I I I think it it's a culture that has a lot of secrets and it just it just makes me extremely curious. Yeah, I also like the, there's a punk rock culture over there as well, which is I yeah. think is kind of neat. They're, everybody you think is just so prim and proper over there, but they're not. There's a, there's a whole punk no. rock 
punk rock culture over there. I know. I went to, like, when I first went there, I went to a really cool show at New Year's Eve. Like, they, they're crazy. I mean, but Japan has everything. Like, you you can't think of it as, you know, their need and this and that. They It's just they love all sorts of things. And they're, I'm sure you can find, some, like, a group or a scene for anything you're looking for. Uh, yeah. Now, when you're walking around the streets, when you're walking on the streets of Tokyo, are, are you getting stared at a whole lot? If, if, sorry, what was that? When you're walking down the streets, I mean, mm-hmm. you, you, do you get looked at a lot? Do people look at you and stare at you a lot? Mm, I don't know. Not really, I think. A, a little bit, but I don't. I don't really notice. Like when I when I went there the last time, I was there for such a long time, and also like n- close to the dojo, I think they they sort of um, expect me to be a pro wrestler. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Because 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 um, you would see that every now and then. Not that much, but I don't know. I think it's also because I I'm I'm not that tall. I'm not. I don't look like the you know tall, blonde, blue-eyed European. So I don't you know I don't stick mm-hmm. out that much. Yeah. I'm a pretty big guy with a big bushy beard. I got stared. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's very, you know that's very different. When I went there with my best friends. Yeah. They they also you know she's like blonde hair blue eyes tall and they looked at her a lot I don't I don't know I'm their size you know like I'm brown hair it's just like I don't if they see me they look at me but I don't know they're not like oh what is what is going on you know yeah but I think that's fine it's like I wouldn't like that anyways so your this this latest trip to Ice Ribbon how did that how did who contacted you about coming over for Ice Ribbon right so. It, ha- it all happened uh, over my trainer, Humongous, and he's got some connections in Japan. And I don't know, they just like to, to send people from our um, from our promotion over. They did that with another colleague of mine before. She went to Ice Rim before I did, and I was so- sort of the first time, and that went well. So, so they gave me the opportunity as well. And I wanted to go there for summer, and I think they were also lacking girls. So it was just perfect timing. You know, because summer is extremely, um, it's a very busy time. There were a lot of shows and they were very welcoming when it comes to that. As for, they didn't contact me in that way, saying like, oh, we want you. It was more of a, you know, first time like trying out training because I, at this point, I have I had only been wrestling for like two years, a bit longer maybe. So I'm a bit new to it. Mm-hmm. But uh, the deal was like I would come over, they, we would see how it goes, you know, I would do the training and then um, according to that, they would give me so like that many shows. I knew I would go, I was going to do at least like six shows, but in the end, I, like I ended up doing 14 shows because it all went perfectly. Good. Yeah. All right. So I, I like the day to day stuff. I, I really like to find out like the day to day how what happens every day for you. Yeah. So when you arrive at the airport, who's who's there to greet you at the airport? Nobody. <laughs> uh, but it, that was fine because I was actually going with my trainer. He he was super kind. He was as kind to go with me and drop me off at the dojo, introduce me and then he would he went straight back to the airport and flew out to I think it was Okinawa where he had some shows, but mm. so I didn't need anybody to pick me up. I just went straight to the dojo. And there I was welcomed very warmly after traveling for about, I don't know, 16 hours. They were like, you know, introducing me. And then how, like 20 minutes after I arrived there, they were like, oh, Tekura-san, uh, training starts in half an hour. Do you want to train? I was like, I, I don't know. I don't want to because I'm extremely tired, but I'm going to do it anyways. And then, yeah, I had my first training session just right after I got there. And it was punishing but also very cool what would they have you guys do uh i don't i don't know first we started out with stretching that sounds like it's not that you know demanding but gee i mean when when that started i knew this was going to be tough because they stretched me out really uh, i had never been stretched like that and yeah i don't i don't remember what we did i think we got into bump we did a lot of bumping and where I come from we do bumps a little bit differently so those were hardcore but then um i was expecting that also like um my promotion they would tell me yeah in japan it's a bit different you know you gotta you gotta toughen up before that so i was prepared it was all fine what'd you we, do to prepare um i went to the gym a lot 
and I just went to training a lot. Like I would always go, but I just I just um, went a bit more than I usually a little, do. A little extra cardio, get it exactly, get exactly. <laughs> so did the uh, language barrier at all at the dojo? How, how did you guys work through that? Yeah, so um, the first thing I did, as I said, I came prepared. I, I did a Japanese course before. I'm actually learning Japanese right now. Awesome. So, yeah, um, I want to move there at some point, but that's a different story. Me too. I, yeah. <laughs> so I, I, I had a bit of, you know, I mean, after three months of learning a bit of Japanese uh, in a course plus Duolingo doesn't get you very far. So there was definitely a language barrier. Um, the luck, I was very lucky because there, at the same time, like when I got there, there was already a Scottish girl, a Scottish wrestler named Jayla Dark. I'm not sure if you know her, but she is a veteran. She had, she's, she's got like 10 years of wrestling experience and it was her third or fourth time at the Ice Ribbon Dojo. So she introduced me to, you know, she told me how it was going to go down. And um, I wasn't, uh, how do you say, like, I wasn't confronted with that language barrier right away. Mm. So she told me how, you know, how the things worked, and that was fine. Then when it came to talking to the other Joshi wrestlers, it was difficult, obviously, because most of them don't really speak English or any other language. But... um, Do any of them speak English? Sorry? Do any of them speak English at all? Yeah, I mean, yes. Uh, Yuki spoke English, Maya Yuki. Mm-hmm. Do you know? Yeah, she, she, I could definitely have a good conversation with her. And then the rest of them, they had like basic English. And then I tried hard to use my Japanese. So we did like a weird mix of that. And which, which I liked also. I mean, you just have to try very hard and, um, you know, move your hands and, and your uh, legs and try to, have a conversation. Honestly, like honestly that. that's one of the, the things I love about Japan is that they don't speak English and you kind of have to figure it out. I, I, I don't know. I, I find that enjoyable and, and the other people are trying so hard to be so kind to you and stuff and you just want to be so kind to them, you know. It's just a, a process together and that's really one of the things I enjoy about Japan. I've, I feel the same way. It, I, I like that a lot because also also when when it doesn't work there's there's just so many fun situations you know it's like uh, misunderstandings and if you try hard enough you're gonna you know, you're gonna get to a point you know where, yeah. where you can communicate and it's it's just just very different i like it a lot as well I, I don't mind the language barrier of course when it comes to working in the ring that's different you have to uh, uh that's that needs a lot of concentration you know um trying to figure out what the other person means but I mean, after I was there for six weeks and after like three, four weeks, I was doing fine enough to, you know, talk about a match beforehand. So what was your first match at Ice Ribbon? What my first match was a dojo show. I think I got introduced at the dojo like two days after I got there, but without a match. And then the following week I did a match. I think it was a comedy match. I think it was uh, Fujimoto's uh, birthday. We had a balloon match. I had, I had, I did not know what a balloon match was, but it's <laughs> like I don't know. We, I think it was three against three or four against four. Yeah, it was just a lot of balloon crushing or trying to, which didn't work out very well. But it was, it was very fun. Yeah, How we did a lot of. How do explain that to you? <laughs> Dude, I, I asked a lot of, I asked a lot of times beforehand. Uh, sumimasen balloon ma- match what 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 is balloon match but they are all like when when they did understand me they were all like man i don't know either like they all they had all not done a balloon match before so i think you know how it is H- half an hour before it starts they're like you know they 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 try to figure it out themselves so yeah what are some other matches that st- stood out to you that were were fun matches for your learning experiences oh i mean i i didn't have to do i mean i love to watch those they had a lot of eating competitions that was crazy i had never seen anything like that i didn't have to i was just doing seconds for those like i wasn't participating in those matches but i think they they had a sausage eating competition 
you know, so they, it was like a tag team match and uh, they were they were fighting. And then whenever the music would come on, they would have to stop right where they were. Like if, if one of them had the other, you know, right about to body slam, then they would get out. The, the seconds would come in, you know, they had to stand like that and they would be fed with sausages. <laughs> and then when the music would stop, they would just, you know, keep on going where, you know, where they stopped. And that was that was crazy. I mean, at the beginning, it's all fine. But after three or four minutes, they, you know, they get really tired and they don't have time to swallow sausage. So it just it's, it's insane. They, you know, their faces get all red and they try to chew it down and they have to wrestle at the same time. <laughs> it's, it's, it's so it's so it's torture. I don't know. I was like, oh, my God, this I would Japanese- love to do it. Yeah. wrestling it's it's hard it's it's strong style it's all hard yeah you know. <laughs> it's everything <Strong> style. <laughs> this is japanese humor and i would be like what is going on but i i sort of i sort of got into it myself i was like i i love watching this this is crazy but i love watching it japanese are crazy so you did a bunch of those ueno park outside shows as yeah. well didn't you that's true yeah how are those the- Oh, those were crazy as well. And, you know, I, for those who have been to Japan in summer, Jesus, this is crazy as well. Like, it was it was so hot. Like, you didn't even have to wrestle, and it was way too hot to do anything. But then you're out there, and you have to wrestle as well. But the cool thing was that we did a lot of, like, um, water matches. I don't know how to say that. Like, we had big water guns and just did a lot of, you know, fun stuff. It was it was mostly comedy matches as well, and just we were just having a lot of fun. It was it was a bit tough though because I had no experience in doing three matches in one day. So you know you get there, you you talk about the match, you put your clothes on, you eat something, and you're out there, and then you talk to the fans, and then you're off stage again, and then you you know you have one hour to talk about the next match, and then you know and so on. So it's it can be very tiring. Also with the language barrier and everything. And, you know, if you have fallen into water beforehand and don't have a second costume like I did at that point, it you know, it's all a bit messy. But it's a good experience, I guess. So how did the fans take to you? Do they embrace you pretty well? I think so. I think I, I did pretty well with the fans because I, I tried to use my Japanese a lot. And they thought I think they thought that was very funny. And also lovely, I don't know, in a certain way. I tried to come up with those little stories, like uh, me and, you know, I would get into this character, like I'm talking to my mom and she's, try, you know, she's pissed off that I'm in Japan being a wrestler. So I would I would translate that into Japanese in a Rakugo style. I don't know if you know that. Do you know Rakugo? Uh-uh. It's, this, it's like a, it's like a storyteller. Um, it's like, it is, it's an art of storytelling like you have one person on the stage um, telling a comedic story, mostly comedic. It can be also sentimental or, you know, but this is like Japanese know it. I, I don't think it used to be popular. It's not that popular anymore, but you can still see it in Japan. And I'm a big fan of that, even though I don't understand it. But I tried to do that for them and they they were just they would just go crazy. They were really they were having a lot of fun, I think. And they were demanding that all the time. And once you do it, yeah, I always have to do it. So, yeah, you know, it's it's cute. And you get super fans, you know, or super fans, you know, just people who would always come up to my table and just give me a little something, you know, like a, like a little toy or or something Japanese, you know. And That's I not... think, this, yeah, I love that. I brought well, I brought gifts to the uh, some of the women that I went over and saw when I came in September as well. So I think it's kind of I don't know. It's kind of the neat part of the culture too of the wrestling things. The omiyagi. I brought them omiyagi. Uh, a couple Absolutely. of wrestlers helped me get tickets, so I was like, I, I take care of them, right? That is, that is cool. That you know, it, it makes it makes us feel very good, also. You know, it's so. I don't know how it is in the states, but it's not very common in Europe, I'd say. You know, you, I mean, nothing against the European audience, but you know, it's a different treatment when you go to Japan. You're, it's very respectful, and it's very nice to have just a little, you know, just a bit of attention in that sense. Did you get any streamers at all? I did. That was crazy. I was, I was, I didn't expect it. Like I knew they, they were asking for my, for my favorite colors and I told them, but I didn't expect to get streamers so soon. 
and that was that was it's just such an honor and that's it's pretty cool it's a very cool feeling so tell me about a few of the wrestlers that stood out to you that you either saw wrestle or you we worked against or worked mm -hmm. with i obviously our ace uh fujimoto Tsukasa, um she's extremely good like i got the opportunity to to uh, have my last match against her um and that was i learned a lot through that that was pretty cool she's just she's a stamina monster i think that's also her like nickname she I, it's crazy how she can she can go forever and she's so, see she's a very good wrestler i also thought yuki was super good she's she has a certain way of presenting herself on stage that i like a lot and Tsukushi, uh, Tsukushi is crazy. Like she's like I'm, I'm the shortest. Re I'm one of the shortest wrestlers in Europe. That is a fact. But Tsukushi is even smaller than I am, and she is so strong and so hard hitting and just punishing. And I think like she's a very good wrestler. Uh, she's she. I think she also has like the longest um, experience. Even and I, I don't know I think she's like 20 or something. It's it's a uh, it's pleasure to watch her wrestle. And yeah, it's crazy to think that I mean, you started relatively later. Mm -hmm. I mean, some of these girls have been wrestling. They're 18 years old, 20 years old. They've been wrestling six, eight years already. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy. Some some of those girls pretty... start with with like nine years. I started with 23. <laughs> Imagine that. <laughs> Uh, one person I want to ask you about, she's like an internet darling, is Ram Kai Chow. Is that how you say oh, her name? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's Ram. Ram is cool. Tell me yeah. about her. Oh, she's she's awesome. Um, we had we had some um, how do you say face offs? No. Um, I don't know. We had some we had some moments. We we faced each other like a couple of times, and I think she's pretty cool. I love her gimmick. And she's just she's just playing it very well. And she's also one of the most popular ones. One of the most popular wrestlers. Uh, yeah, it's cool to work with her. She's always she's, she's got this stone cold face, but she's she's very lovely actually. Don't ruin her gimmick. Come on. Yeah, she's no, I mean, terribly I mean, mean, right? No, she's no, a horrible ab person. Absolutely. She not once she smiled at me. <laughs> <laughs> what, what did you take from in the ring that you brought back to you to Vienna? Um, I didn't have. I mean, I didn't have a lot of in ring experience, so I took it all back to Vienna the the thing is yeah I, I it's the it's the precision that is the that is the number one thing actually you know we would you hear that a lot I think about Japanese wrestling it's one of those things you will do a move so many times until it's just perfect I, they won't they won't let you get away with anything that is halfway or mediocre you know what I mean so this is something I really admired I, I I wasn't one of those people who, who would do drop kicks beforehand and after after Japan it's like I love doing drop kicks it's like they really taught me how to do that perfectly I also brought back uh, the fisherman suplex the bridged one I always wanted to do that um, I perfected that one and I think it's also just a just a fast paced wrestling which I always like to watch myself I don't like when it you know when it's too slow, but it and and it also fits my style, so I brought I brought that back. And it's just just the in ring experience is is super valuable. Like I think I came to Japan with I had done fourteen matches maybe, maybe fifteen, and I I doubled that with my stay in Japan. I'm mm -hmm. really happy for you. I'm glad you got the opportunity to go over there. Oh, well, thank uh, you. Any final thoughts about I mean going back to Japan at all? We, we, anything planned? or anything yeah. you're, you're looking forward to doing maybe in the future? In fact, I have a tab open on my laptop right now. Um, and I'm going to probably, once we're finished here, I'm going to book my flight back to Japan um, for February. I'm going to go back there for five weeks to oh. do some more ice swimming right. shows. You'll have to let me know when in February because I'm, I'm going to be there in early March. So maybe we'll cross paths. Yeah, for sure. I will be there. Yeah. I think I'll go there around the 14th of February, and I'm gonna stick around until the 22nd of March. So we'll let's let's keep in touch about that. Yeah, I'll have to come say hi to you. Yeah, sure. Watch awesome. you watch you pop some balloons or something. Yeah, at 
Korakuen Hall. Uh, if I go there, um, I'll definitely have some shows there. Yeah, just let me know. Let's keep okay. in touch. We'll keep in touch. All right, where can we find you on social media? Oh, right. Uh, you can find me on Twitter. Um, but that is toxic underscore Tikla, T-H-E-K-L-A. And you can find me on Facebook, uh, The Toxic Spider. Well, again, I want to thank you so much for joining me, and uh, we look forward to seeing you in the future. Thank you so much for having me. Thanks. Thanks.